Hi guys and welcome to your daily tarot reading for Thursday the 18th of November 2021. Thanks for joining me. I'm going to use the medieval Scapini tarot for today's reading. Let's see what the cards have to say about this day and what's coming up for you. Okay, so let's see. The first card is the devil. Okay. And we've got the Eight of Swords. And the Page of Cups. All right, interesting. Let's see. So the devil is about paying too much attention to the physical reality and the details that say, no, you cannot. The Eight of Swords feels similar in the sense that I cannot do anything because I'm just so surrounded by negativity and it's holding me back. And then finally, the page of cups is a willingness to learn and to adapt emotionally and to overcome things like this. But it's a big ask for the little page to have to deal with the perspective of the physical world versus the spiritual world. And then also to navigate relationships. There's a lot of learning that can be done today. Okay, so first of all, with the devil, so with, with that said, you know, if it is a bit much for the page, then the immediate um, sense that you'll have is that there may be a feeling of overwhelm or like these huge expectations are looming over you and there's no way that you're going to be able to get everything done or to do everything that you're supposed to be doing, which can cause a lot of stress and you can put yourself under a lot of pressure. So I think the first thing to do is to realize that you're doing your best and that that's going to have to be good enough. And that's the end of it. At least you're showing up, you're doing the best you can. And if you can't sort out a 100,000 different things in one day, then that's normal. So the Devil card, the 15th card in the Major Arcana, it's that part of the Major Arcana where you realize that giving things and people and things external to yourself, too much power over you, usually lands you in a situation where you become disempowered. So if you approach a situation and you, you buy into the imbalance, like the devil in this case having all the power, and you as the person working with them having zero of the power, then you start seeing these chains that the, these people down here have tied around their legs, and they kind of become powerless and they have zero choice. And the interesting thing as well is it seems that they're going to be punished eternally for making one little mistake. It seems way over the top. So the whole thing about the devil card is it's not to do with the devil. It's about seeing the, the, the physical reality and assuming that it's completely set in stone and that it's permanent. It's a big mistake to do that because if you realize that your life changes all the time and that the current circumstances that you're experiencing are simply a, a result of previous decisions you've made, then you re-empower yourself and you can say, well, what's the exit here? How can I get out of this situation rather than just blindly accepting it? And then you get out the little hacksaw and you start cutting off the chains and then you run off. And that's the real point. It's to to not let the world around you influence you too much. And I think with this spread that would extend into the opinions and insights of other people. Don't let those influence you too much either, especially if you're hearing no all the time. No, you can't. We can't publish your manuscript because you don't have an agent. No, you can't get into this university. You don't have the right grades. No, no, no. You know, these, these just um, decisions or these, these blanket statements or judgments that you can't act, uh, do anything with. Don't let those put you off. There's always another way around. And if something seems to shut down and close completely, then one, don't take it too seriously and look at a way that you can work with this circumstance and how you can maybe sidestep it. Okay, so remember that the real power resides in you, not in your, in your property or your job or how you live or where you live. It's really the decisions you make. So with this card being here, you're being prompted to make a decision for yourself that you make because you're taking your own interests and desires seriously. And it's not a decision that you make out of 
out of fear or being under duress or pressure. So this card is saying no knee-jerk reactions, please. If, you know, if you do have a job that isn't ideal, but you see it as super serious and this is the only job you'll ever have, then a knee-jerk reaction would be, okay, today I quit because I can't take this anymore. But if you see it correctly as this is the thing that's paying your bills right now, you're in it because you signed the contract and you agreed to do this job, but if you start looking for other types of work that are more enjoyable and that continue to pay your bills, then you're gradually moving out of a situation because you're seeing it as more translucent. It's not the be all and end all. It's just a stepping stone, one among many. So the Eight of Swords is a card that uh, makes you feel like you don't have a clear idea of what's going on. You're stuck. Um, you can't really make a decision because you don't have all the information and it feels threatening and it feels again like you're powerless and this time you're you're at the mercy of this judge here we can't even see his face but he's certainly a representative of the institution he's wearing his hat and the little white wig the curls and then the judge's cloak and here we've got this guy just being presented and whatever this man decides to scroll down on his little quill or with his quill and parchment paper there, then that is the end of it. So it makes you feel like you're being thrown to the wolves. So what I would say here, watch out for someone who makes an offer that is too good to be true. And try and not commit yourself to someone else's agenda, especially if you don't know that person very well or if you don't know what the exact plan is. So that extends to friends asking you to do something for them or joining a political party when you don't have all the facts or, um, yeah, blindly signing a contract without reading it. Avoid all of those things today. They're the kind of things that can then make you feel like, oh, the physical world is looming on me and it's reducing my ability to choose and I feel somewhat crucified. Okay, so don't get yourself in a situation where you feel you have to dig yourself out afterwards. And then finally, the Page of Cups, a court card. Um, so either that's a, a person who appears in your life or it's a quality that you really feel on this day. And I think it's a quality that helps you combat all of this. And the Page is the most inexperienced, but he's also the most willing to learn and he's the most open. So Cups is water, that's the heart and soul and um, family and relationships and spirituality and the way you feel about your life. So the page of cups, because it's almost like, you know, when, when you have a tree branch and it, the winds get really, really strong and a tree branch that is rock solid is often going to break. Okay. But uh, a branch that's just kind of sprouted and is green and, and um, flexible, doesn't matter how strong the wind is, it's just going to bend and it's going to flap in the wind. And that's the same thing here. Emotionally, you're able to bend and to adapt and to change the way you feel. So you have a huge um, amount of control over your own reactions. And you're also intuitive, water, spirituality. So it's almost like these things that you're being confronted with today, you have a natural sense internally of, okay, now I'm in, you know, deep trouble here. I'm going to have to get through this. Or this doesn't seem quite right. I don't think I should bother with this at all today. Or, uh, well, that, you know, was a disappointment. Let's sit and stew in it. It's all these, these um, responses to a situation which is full of pressure and which kind of puts you under scrutiny and makes you feel smaller. So instead of leaping to the usual emotional conclusion, the Page of Cups allows you to see the situation differently and to see what other people, what their role in it was, that you're able to see that, well, maybe the outcome wasn't ideal, but you did the best you could under the circumstances and that you learn that you don't need to berate yourself, that not everything always needs to go your way, that it's not the end of the world if things don't go your way. And also you learn that you have a choice over your responses, the way you feel, and that certain things which aren't ideal aren't so dramatic that they, they are a personal... What am I trying to say? I'm trying to say that the things that happen in your life, successes and failures, 
are not like a CV that's going to be listed under your name of here is the page of cups. He succeeded at family life and work and he failed at this and this and this. It's not like that. So you give yourself a bit more freedom in terms of I can choose my reactions. I can do the best I can. I can focus on the things that are important to me. And I can on this day and also as a general rule of thumb, turn my back from undue influence and also a sense of despair that the world is completely solid and I can't do anything about it. it gives you back the hope that you are capable in yourself and that you can make your own rules and that you don't need to take the existing rules so seriously. You can kind of float in and out and navigate your life in a way that you feel comfortable with despite the obstacles and that really is a willingness to learn and to yeah, become more resilient emotionally, not to be put off easily and to always look at the prize and to keep going towards it. Yeah, and that's, yeah, I mean, that's a way of living. That's a fabulous way of living. To not let the, the difficulty stop you, but to inspire you to learn more and to become a more multifaceted, complete and interesting individual, a human being. Number-wise, we've got 15 and 1 is 16, 16 and 8 is 24, 2 and 4 is 6, and 6 is an opportunity that appears temporarily. It's a window of opportunity that opens on this day and then shuts again. So there are, you learn how to react differently, and you're also able to learn that certain things can simply be shrugged off. They don't need to be taken seriously. Okay, so I hope you have a fabulous day. If you would like a personal reading with me, please get in touch via my website. It's gregoryscott.com. On the front page, click on book your reading to audio reading with me. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, hit subscribe and share the video online. Have an amazing day and I'll speak to you tomorrow.